Hi. I'd pick you up, but I'm pretty sure you'd climb me in the face. So I'm JD the Media Jack, and this is another episode of The Flip Side, a podcast that initially started as a radio show, a talk radio show. With a lot of things going on in this world right now that are just basically scary, questionable, and causing even panic, I kind of wanted to get an idea of what's going on around the world. So I reached out to a few friends. Dan, who lives in Vancouver, Chris, who lives in New York, as well as Tom, who lives in New Zealand, and Chris R. from the UK. I wanted to get their perspective, as well as know how things are going in their portion of the world. This whole thing is scary. Um, so take this with a grain of salt. These aren't experts. These are just some friends who are experts in their own fields and how they're dealing with what we're all dealing with right now. Daniel, last name Ozel, and I live in Vancouver, British Columbia. And what do you do for a living? I'm a creative director for a kids and family creative agency, uh, and also a dad. <laughs> well, that is a full-time job, yeah. Yeah, I mean, full-time. The, the payment's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you and I have known each other for years. Uh, we met back in 1994, and we went to high school together. Yes, correct. Yes. Yeah, we've known each other for, gosh, most of our lives yep. at this point. Pretty much, and you haven't yeah. uh, gotten sick of me yet, so clearly I'm not, doing something right. Not yet, though the distance helps. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Vancouver is actually where I'm originally from. I, I moved from Vancouver to Prince George in 2004 and have uh, stayed in Prince George ever since. The big uh, difference between Vancouver and Prince George is uh, the population of Prince George can fit into Vancouver multiple times over. So, the population density in Vancouver is much, much bigger. Mm -hmm. With that being said, everything that's going on right now, of course, we're talking about uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus and stuff. Um, when did you start to notice that maybe something was amiss, not only in your perspective of the world, but also in your hometown? Right. Yeah. So uh, I would have to say things started to go um, awry, I would say maybe about two, three weeks ago. So, of course, everyone was watching the news and seeing everything that was coming in through the news, just what was happening in China and then in Italy. And everyone, I think at first, and, and speaking from the perspective of someone who, you know, would see some friends somewhere, it's like, hey, let's go out and get a drink somewhere. Um, you know, we would talk about it. It's like, oh, shoot, should we be doing this? Like, people were still struggling to understand what this all meant. Right. Right. Because you had and, you know, everyone was having uh, these conversations where they were saying, oh, this is just a really bad flu or is this as bad as it really is? You know, there were there were the two extremes and we we're all trying to figure it out. Uh, so a few weeks ago, yeah, I would say about three weeks ago, we were we were starting to talk seriously about it. Um, now, being a father and having a child in daycare. Um, to our daycare's credit and also to Vancouver Coastal Health credit, uh, they've really been on the forefront um, with just staying informed and informing all of us parents about what measures we need to take, preventative measures that we need to take. Uh, so, you know, we've, we've seen it all, you know, wash your hands, don't try not to touch your face, Etc. Etc. Et just practicing good hygiene. So that really started to pick up steam around about the same time, two to three weeks ago. Um, and then, as things started to progress, so getting down to like two weeks ago to one week ago, uh, when everyone started shutting down local services. So excluding any kind of federal mandates, this was um, city city bodies like parks, etc. You know, and local businesses like gyms, for example, just shutting their doors and saying, "Look, you know, we're we're not going to meet trouble halfway here. We're we're going to um, close things down and, and hopefully slow down the spread." Right. Um, just to clarify, uh, mm -hmm. your son Jasper, how old is he? Uh, he's four, or in his words, four and a half. He's, <laughs> he's very specific about that. Hey, numbers uh, matter. 
Yeah, he's he's a metrics based uh, preschooler, <laughs> you know. So it's four, it's four and a half. Yeah, four and a half. And uh, you you and your son go out uh, regularly. Um, I, I love your Instagram feed of Haggis and Son. <laughs> Because it's, oh, it's cute. It's adorable. It looks like you two, you have, always have a great time. And he is not shy in front of the camera. Uh, no, he is not. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Um, yes, yeah, the camera, I think, loves him yes. just as much as he does. So, yeah. Okay, so um, it was about a week ago you started to notice that things in Vancouver, like uh, non-essential businesses like gyms and 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 restaurants and even bars started to voluntarily close their doors. Um, when did you start to notice that uh, maybe panic buying and um, panic mentality has started to sink in? Oh, gosh. Um, I think, you know, when, um, when all the major sports leagues just suddenly said, you know what, we're just going to postpone or put our seasons on, on hiatus. Mm-hmm. That's when things really started to click. Um, for us, we, um, you know, as as a family, we, we go to uh, Whitecaps games. My son really likes soccer, so we do that. Uh, I'll sometimes go to Canucks games with uh, friends. So you know, that was that was the first big thing where where a lot of people, especially in our circle of friends and and family and whatnot, were saying, you know what, I think we're going to stay at home. Uh, and then all the sports teams started to follow suit very shortly after because I think they could kind of see what was what was coming as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so just that that visual I think really influenced how how people started thinking at the time. Um, our neighborhood, I would say, we we have a very small uh, family-owned grocery store uh, that's like a couple blocks away. Uh, going there, it wasn't. Too bad they were aware, but you know, it wasn't like shelves were empty. You right. know what I mean? Right. Um, but also, and what's really common in our area is that people have their groceries delivered anyway. I mean, especially for us as a family, we don't particularly want to spend a Saturday with an angry preschooler uh, shopping for groceries. Right. So, so you know, we've we've gotten into the habit of having our groceries delivered. Uh, which opens up on weekends. That's you know when everyone's healthy. Right. Um, so we really started to notice a couple of weeks ago when when this all started picking up steam that uh, other people had the same idea as us. That suddenly deliveries for food were starting to be sold out. Uh, so we're getting our groceries a few days later than we normally would have. Right. Right. So that was that was the first indication that oh, okay yeah people are starting to stock up a little bit and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, build their toilet paper forts. How have, uh, it's, it's, it's you, uh, your significant other, Mm -hmm. uh, her name, Stacy, you, Stacy and Jasper, uh, live together in Mm -hmm. a very beautiful community in Vancouver. Um, how are you guys uh, feeling and how are you dealing with it right now? Because as of the time of this recording, uh, it's basically been day five of what is essentially a lockdown. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, first couple of days were a bit tricky because, of course, we're, we're watching, uh, you know, federal updates from the prime minister, from all the major cabinet ministers and whatnot, um, and health officials just reporting on here's what's going on and whatnot. So there is a certain level of stress that comes with that. Um, but also interacting with friends, family, co-workers, and whatnot. Again, like we're going through that that phase of trying to understand what this stage means. Right. Right. You know, a few weeks ago, we were asking questions about what does it mean? Like, are we going to socially distance ourselves? Now we're at that stage, and we're trying to figure out. Okay, now we're here. How are we trying to adapt to that? So, first couple of days were a bit tricky. Um, for us, because we, we started a little bit earlier to phase into it, we stopped taking public transit. Um, we worked from home a little bit more often. Uh, things like this that we started to do. So we've, we've been adapting. Um, luckily, there's, there's a lot of resources at our disposal, such as um, content creators online. Uh, 
like storybook or children's book writers and illustrators who are reading stories online. In fact, right now, both Stacy and Jasper are in the other room watching um, their favorite authors read stories mm -hmm. on Instagram. So that's cool. So there are things, yeah, there are things like this that that um, we're able to do to keep ourselves busy and and thinking ahead. We thought, okay, if um, if this lockdown happens, which which it obviously did. What are some areas that we think uh, we would be upset at ourselves at if we had not thought about? Right. And so what we did is we just did some proactive toy shopping, thinking, okay, if we go into lockdown, we'll have these toys delivered to our house, um, and then we've, we've got them just in case our son just starts losing his mind. He's like, you know, too much cabin fever, can't take it. Right. Then we've got some new stuff that we can introduce. And thinking, okay, maybe let's say none of this happens. Well, we'll put the toy into storage and we'll have a birthday present. Already, <laughs> you know, you know, it's already checked off the list. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, there there are things like that that we've we've done. Uh, just applying a routine, right? We've taken his daily routine of what he would do at daycare normally. Uh, and apply it at home. So we get up in the morning, have breakfast. <clears throat> we go through arts and craft time. Then what would be circle time, where we play some music, sing some songs, and then story time, etc., etc., etc. So we're going through a routine. So the routine may have changed locations, but it hasn't changed. That's a good idea. I mean, routine is what causes people to know that you know everything's going to be okay and. Things may change, but we can adapt. Yeah, exactly, and and especially for kids too. And and we found that other parents as well are going through this experience where their kids are are picking up on the stress of the situation. Right, they're noticing their mom and dad might be a little bit more um, on edge than normal. <laughs> right. Um, so, and I think it's it's important to show you know just show kids like look you know we're yeah, a few things have changed, but we're carrying on. We're we're adapting, and everything is fine. And and that certainly helps because kids will go through the motions of just trying to tick off the boxes. Like, hey, we're still good here, right? Right. So you know, in in their own ways, and and to the extent with, in which they perceive which how is, things are operating right now, which is difficult for kids. Yeah. How has this affected your and Stacy's work? Um, I mean, it's 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 affected us, you know. Uh, it's affected uh, everyone that we that we work with, um, our clients, our vendors that that work with our company. Um, you know, it, everyone's feeling it for sure. Um, luckily for us, I mean, we've we've got the luxury that that we can work from home, hmm. and this is something that I think. A lot of us, not just us, but like other companies, other countries even are realizing like, you know what, there's a lot of work that we can do from home because a lot of us work through the internet now, right? Right. Um, this, I mean, you know, look at this conversation that we're having. Like we've, we've, you know, you and I have, have maintained a, a close friendship over the years despite the long distance, right? Right. And there's no reason why commerce can't also happen this way. It is a bit difficult because we do have, in our line of work, we do interact with certain industries like the restaurant industry, the sports industry, et cetera, who have been affected by, you know, shutting their doors and, and avoiding larger crowds. So there is that element that has affected our work. However, we, you know, for me, like this week, I've, I've been in constant contact with not just our staff, but the people that we work with outside the company uh, just to have that open dialogue and, and keep in contact with other human beings and just talk about how we're going to evolve and, and adapt to the situation and, and keep things going, right? And for us, the important thing is is that, um, you know, when, when we're hit with adversity like this, and none of us have really, you know, here in BC have, have really experienced this before, um, the important thing is, is that when we see this adversity hit us, you know, the good get to work. Right, and and we figure out ways to just keep that contact contact flowing, and keep talking to each other. Uh, hello, my name is Chris D. Boudreaux.
and I am a stay-at-home father, and I work as a writer for a comic company called Last Ember Press. I also do a bunch of internet work, uh, which involves making videos, doing reviews. Uh, where do you live? I currently live in Brooklyn, New York. I've lived here all 33 years of my life. So living in Brooklyn, New York, when did you actually notice something might be wrong with this whole COVID-19 situation? Honestly, we, at first, everybody in New York was kind of very passive towards it because it's like, well, first everybody was like, well, hopefully it'll be in Europe, you know, won't really make it over to New York, over to America in general. And then, unfortunately, it made it to America, and uh, then we started to worry a bit um, about it making it to New York. I mean, New York is one of the top spots in the United States for tourism, uh, for people in general. And uh, Manhattan, of course, where everybody, you know, it's the melting pot of everybody from all over the world. So the worry definitely was there, especially when it uh, started to make it to America. Um, some people, of course, you know, you have the people who believe, you know, oh, the, the media is throwing it out of proportion or, you know, the, you know, nobody's really super worried about it or whatnot. Honestly, we, once we heard it was in America, we started to worry myself and my family, that's for sure. Mm. And then when a case broke in New York, that's when you started to get the people who are panicking to really start to panic. Things disappeared off shelves. It started with the toiletries, and then it moved into food, formula for children. I have a two-month-old baby. Thank God I am very well stocked. I was well stocked before this happened, before any worry about it, uh, the uh, virus hitting America happened. And um, I'm glad I actually have a little bit extra in stock because right now that's one of the hardest things to find. That and toiletries is, are some of the hardest things to find. Mm. Um, and it's really, honestly, right now it's like a dead split. You have people who are super panicked, super worried, like always at the shop, at the stores, you know, before they open, ready to run in, you know, like it's release day of a new pair of Nikes, and then you have the people who still don't believe that it's a bad, you know, it's that bad out there that the media is blowing things up, and unfortunately there aren't that many people in the middle, um, there are like maybe a handful of us that are, you know, worried, but at the same time, you know, we're not like running to buy every single toilet paper roll out from the store. How has your city responded to the situation? At first, our city was taking uh, a lot of precautions. You know, they were telling everybody, if you don't have to go out, you know, don't. Um, they closed. They started a close for certain places. Um, certain places started to close down because of this. You know, for a little while at least. Uh, the mayor was one of the issues, in my opinion, uh, with the schools. Um, a lot of the parents, a lot of us. I have also a six-year-old who is in kindergarten right now. A lot of us didn't want the schools to be open because, you know, with the spread of this virus and how fast it was spreading, you know, they say don't go on public transportation, don't, uh, you know, don't be in places where there is a lot, where there are a lot of people, you know, congregating. And a lot of people in New York take public transportation to get to school. A lot of kids are in our school system. So two of the no-nos. And then finally, thank God, between the parents and I believe our governor, Governor Cuomo, uh, our mayor shut the schools down at least at the earliest reopening being April 20th, uh, the latest being schools will be closed for the rest of the school year. Um, just today, uh, as of today, they actually, uh, our governor also has um, set that um, effective Sunday, all non-essential businesses are to shut down for an unknown amount of time. Uh, so at first, I feel like we you know, we were taking it as light or as precautionous as possible. We were as precautious as possible. And then as the cases grew more and more and more, I mean, literally overnight, they were, um, there was um, a double in the amount of cases. And uh, that's when I think it pushed for our, you know, for our, our um, governor to actually start putting, closing things down. And that's what pushed our mayor to shut the schools down finally. So now I believe they're taking as much precaution as possible without doing a stay-at-home uh, shelter, um, putting that into effect. So we're just waiting and seeing how uh, all of it develops and if the case is slowed down. Again, it all depends on the people to take into what 
the media and our government is saying and staying inside unless they nece- they must go out. Do you feel as though the uh, the way the government reacted and has been acting has been too late? I do feel the government was a little bit late because our president was not taking the situation seriously at first. He was blowing it off, saying that, you know, it's not so bad. You know, we have great doctors, this and that. It's not going to be as bad as people are projecting. And then really quickly, I believe, he found out that how wrong that statement was. Uh, in reality, borders, travel, definitely should have been suspended the moment that they were, the cases of the coronavirus were being spread throughout Europe. Uh, and America did not take the precautions I feel they should have. This is all, again, my opinion. Uh, I think we should have been a little bit more um, strict with uh, what we, who, you know, how people were coming back in, checks, especially for people who were coming in from out of country, and that didn't happen, and that's how it got into the United States. And then um, the government not taking it as seriously as it should have, that's what caused the spread even further. How has your family dealt with the situation and how are you dealing with the situation right now? At first, my family, we just decided that we were not going to go out uh, as much as possible, especially once we found out that uh, my son was staying home from school. Uh, We went to the stores. We tried to get the normal amount of toiletries and food that we would need in case there was a stay-at-home order. Uh, Also, just to have stuff in the house in general. Um, of course, that's, that's been honestly the most difficult part. As a person who works from home, it's not hard for me to, um, to work from home or to right. stay at home. Right. So uh, for me, it's just, you know, life is normal. You know, life as usual, just make sure we have a little bit of extra provision. Uh, unfortunately, because of what's been going on where people are panic buying, I've been having to go out uh, a couple of extra times because I have to wait for the stores to get things in stock. Currently, we have enough food, we have enough toiletries to last us for a good month. I would say a good month, a little bit more than a month in case anything happens. Um, I'm not going out unless absolutely necessary, whether it be for medicine or like milk, because you know milk only lasts for so long, or eggs, you know, the essentials that you need like on a week to week basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm doing what you know is asked. I'm keeping myself and my family clean and I'm staying in and keeping my family in as much as possible. No unnecessary trips, and yeah, that's how we're dealing with it so far. What are you hoping for in the near future? Honestly, I'm hoping for two things right now. Uh, First, the people that are panic buying and hoarding a lot of the stuff in the stores, I'm hoping that they, you know, stop and they only buy what they need so that everyone uh, living in Brooklyn and in New York in general, there are a lot of uh, families here. There are a lot of houses here. There are a lot of apartment complexes. There was one that was just built recently uh, close to where I live, and you could fit at least four of our neighborhoods in it. It's that big. So imagine only having a handful of supermarkets and all these people trying to hoard all the toiletries and food. My hope is that people start to buy only what they need and allow for other families to. Um, be able to get the stuff that they need. Like I was saying before, like my, my with my baby, my formula with, you know, juices and, and essential food, sugar, stuff like that that is just gone off the shelf. And then the other thing, and the most important thing I feel, more than more than what I just talked about, is for people to start taking this seriously, there are still way too many groups of people out there that are not taking this seriously, that are causing this virus to spread and um, these people need to realize this is real, this is not a hoax, this is not something the media is blowing up. People have to stop, you know, thinking that they are invulnerable to something that is super serious right now in the world. And that is why I feel like the germ is spreading and why eminently everything is going to have to shut down and everyone is going to have to stay in their homes for at minimum two weeks to see who does and who doesn't have this virus and to get some control. My hope is that by my birthday, which is at the end of May, this virus is under control and we can get back to life as, no, as normal or at least as normal as possible at that time. My name is Tom Scully. I have a PhD in organic chemistry. I work for Victoria University of Wellington in Wellington, New Zealand. I live in Petoni, which is a small suburb just outside of Wellington. Uh, it's very nice here. <laughs> now, um, you actually have a very personal connection to Prince George. Your family lives here and you grew up here. 
Yeah, no, I spent most of my formative years in Prince George, never lived anywhere else until I left to do my uh, PhD at the University of Alberta in Edmonton, and mom and dad and family's all still there. Being that you live in New Zealand, when did you first notice that something was amiss when it came to the pandemic that's going on right now around the world? Um, we heard the same like first news reports out of China at the beginning of the year that everybody else did. Um, right away, like health officials here took note of it, and like people around took note of it. Uh, it seemed isolated at the time. Of course, not now. But I think like our interaction with it through the generalized international media was the same as anybody else's. When did you start to notice that there was definitely something happening within your uh, current community and place of residence? I think in the last two to three weeks, things started to change here. We started having meetings at work about it, uh, more preemptive than anything else, getting procedures in place for if we have to work from home, um, new procedures around for cleaning, for sterilizing, that sort of things, to be ready uh, in the eventuality that things do come here, so it seems like it's going everywhere, um, and so we can be ready ahead of the curve rather than being uh, reactive. With your industry of employment, I mean, you actually really have to work in a very sterile environment as is. Yeah, so we have, we work in a pretty pretty clean space, and we have procedures in place for all sorts of different things. Gotcha. I mean, when things started to go awry, and the virus literally started to make its trek around the world, um, because you work in such a unique position, at least in my opinion, was there anything that really came to mind or came to light that need to be brought to your attention? Not particularly special in, in, in our line of work. Like we're still plugging ahead, doing all our work. Everybody's still at work, doing our thing. Um, the biggest concerns that we've had is like the limits on international travel, the self-isolation of people coming back into the country. So a few of our, our staff members are self-isolating um, as per the government protocols. But other than that, our day-to-day -day hasn't really changed. Okay. So what has your overall city response been uh, as of the time of this recording? Uh, it's been proactive. It's been quite responsible. And so far, it's been generally well-received in the public. Um, so. New Zealand currently, as of the time of this, uh, we've closed the they've closed the borders to all all people coming in who aren't citizens. So it's the, the same as Canadian policy is right now. Um, anyone coming to the country from overseas has to self isolate for two weeks. Uh, you need to have a good idea in place. Um, so when you land, the immigration and customs officials want to hear that you have a good idea of how you're going to do this, take care of yourself, and maintain for two weeks. Generally, the community has a good response to this. It's been kind of heartening to see how well people take it. Um, people are doing the social distancing, they're staying home when they can, uh, you know, staying away from work if they feel sick, hand washing, good protocols for that. Uh, everybody's taking it on in stride. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to keep in contact with your family back here in Prince George? Yeah, no, we are on you know, the family WhatsApp chat group and that sort of thing, and I call my mom every now and then, probably not as much as I should, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I met your mom. She's a sweetheart. Your entire families are, are just wonderful people. So. Yeah, she she is, and she accepts that some days I'm just like a little busy, and the the many hour time change makes it hard sometimes. Yes, it's true. Um, so how are you dealing with uh, this current situation? Um, we're doing all the appropriate things. Um, we're avoiding large group gatherings. Uh, you know, staying away from uh, large social groups, that sort of thing. Uh, hand washing the protocols, uh, making you know your the usual things, following all the government recommendations. We're definitely not traveling anywhere because mm. we couldn't get back in here, uh, of course, and there aren't a lot of flights uh, trans-Pacific right now. Uh, we're doing all the, the usual social things that we've been told to do, and it's been pretty well and fine for us. So what are you hoping for in the near future, both uh, personally and professionally? Um, I would be really happy to see that the current attitude towards this in the public keep on here. Um, this is a country that is braced for large earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis all the time. So people here have a pretty good attitude towards preparedness and emergencies. And that's really cool to see that, you know, everyone's, you know, living with emergency kits all the time just in case the earth opens up. Um, <laughs> so, it's, yeah, and it's, it's weird to say, but yeah, like we have an emergency kit in case of earthquakes and tsunamis, and that's just a fact of life here. Hmm. Um, so we're just going to keep plugging along uh, as long as people keep doing the correct things as far as like social isolation, self-isolation after travel, uh, and sterilization. It should be okay. Mm. Um, professionally, I would hope that we keep being able to come to work and there are, are no lockdowns as far as quarantining towards workplaces go. And we can keep plugging along, just keeping life more or less as usual as we can. Are you able to work from home? 
Um, I can do part of my work from home, but a large percentage of what I do uh, has to be done in a safe environment, mm-hmm. like uh, as far as like a work safe environment, and I can't do that from home. Gotcha. Um, have you witnessed or seen any of the panic boy? <clears throat> sorry, any of the panic buying that's been going on in the United States and Canada, and is it similar at all in New Zealand? Um, there's been a couple instances of it that we've seen on the news. Definitely nothing in person. Like when we go to the store or to the farmers market, um, which are we have outdoor farmers markets here all year because we have an all year growing season. Just to brag about that. <laughs> <laughs> but this 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 shelves are stocked. New Zealand produces a large amount of food uh, in country, so there's no issues of shortages or rundowns. There are definitely people who are out there who are stocking up more than usual, but there's great supply lines here, uh, and so people in general uh, aren't doing the kinds of things that we see on the news. Mm, okay. Um, and, and finally, for you, because uh, no brag and just facts, you're one of the smartest people that I know, and it's why I adore you so much and also am deathly afraid of you. Is there anything that you can help to better inform myself and anyone else of this situation? Because the information, it seems as though it's coming uh, fast and furious on all sorts of platforms out there. So can you help out with this at all? Yeah, my advice to people, like as a non-expert in that kind of field, would be trust the advice from actual sources, government health organizations, doctors, that sort of thing. Don't believe everything you see on Facebook. Twitter news generally isn't real news. Um, be take, take the appropriate precautions for yourself and for family. If you're immunocompromised, if you live with someone who's elderly or immunocompromised, take extra precautions. Do the things appropriate to keep you safe. But remember, you still have to keep life going on as life. Um, you can be you know, socially distanced from people, still go for a walk, uh, still go and see nature, get some daylight, keep your mental health safe. Because if you find yourself in a situation where you're stressed and anxious all the time, that can do a lot of damage to your personal health and well-being as well. So, you know, keep in contact with people, be that over the internet or in other ways. Um, do the things that are responsible. Do them correctly. Don't look at this as a, a it, won't, it won't happen to me. It can never happen to me. You know, be, be smart, be responsible. Uh, but take care of yourself and take care of those around you. So don't be American. Yeah, don't don't freak out, right? Like, do the yeah, do do the appropriate things, but take care of yourself. Gotcha. Like if you haven't seen the sun in a few days, then you're doing something a little bit wrong. Gotcha. Okay, and supplements will not help with that, no matter how uh, convenient they may be. Yeah, a, a twenty minute walk outside is going to do a lot for your mental health. Uh, it's going to do a lot for your personal like sense of well being, um, and you can do that alone or with people you're isolating with. Um, and just hang out, wave to your neighbor across the street. Um, maybe don't give them a hug right now, but like, still be social. And if you can, if you're in the op- if you, position where you can, um, take care of those who are more self-isolated, more quarantined. Make sure the, the little old lady down the street um, has enough groceries on her doorstep. So my name is Chris Waite. I live in Manchester in the UK, and I am a personal trainer um, in a private PT studio currently. And you do have extensive knowledge when it comes to health and um, diet. I would say so, yeah. (laughs) So when did you first notice that something was amiss in the world and in your community? So I'm very fortunate because I have a lot of face-to-face time with a lot of different people from different walks of life mm-hmm. um, and very little time to myself at the moment, um, which speaks great for career, less so for personal life. Right. Um, but um, I think I first noticed that something was a myth. Um, I think I read on Reddit um, about the, it was an anecdote of some guy eating a bat soup and um, contracting this virus and it all went w- widespread and it just it was a blip on my radar and I paid little to no attention to it until I think I had one client tell me that uh, China was in disarray and um, that um, what was it yeah that China was in a dis- in, was in disarray and that um, international travel in and out of China was um, becoming um, scarce I right. think. Um, 
And then don't worry. After that, I just... so, sorry, Chris. Don't worry. There's, there's, there's going to be lots of editing. <laughs> so, perfect, perfect. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Because when, when I actually have to formulate sentences, yeah, I yeah, can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can piece them together. I know. I, I can get your thought yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. So anyway, uh, China was in disarray. Uh, traveling had stopped. Yeah, so I'd heard that um, traveling in and out of China had stopped, and then um, that was about all I heard from it for a while until um, we started hearing of cases in mainland Europe, mm -hmm. and then everybody started panicking. It was around the time that everybody started panic buying toilet paper in Australia. Um, I found that absolutely hilarious, yes. and Sorry. I remember thinking, like, fucking, what idiots. I can't believe they're doing that sort of thing. And then a few days later, um, I found that um, other countries were doing the same sort of thing. And then it started happening in the UK. And then um, initially, my first stance on everything that was going on was this is not something that we, as, as Brits, need to pay any attention to. We had no confirmed cases in the UK. Um, the closest one was in France, mm. and it was just completely, in my head, I'm going like this is being already blown out of proportion, and it's just creating mass hysteria, and that's about it. And then when we got the first confirmed case in the UK, and everyone lost their mind, um, my stance up until about two, three days ago was, um, it must be longer than that now, it was probably about a week ago, my stance up until about a week ago was, this is still blown out proportion, if you get it, if you're healthy, you're going to be fine. If you do get it and you're immunocompromised um, or you're a smoker or you have asthma or anything like that, that's the, that's the demographic that needs to be concerned, that's the demographic that needs to be quarantined and we as a young healthy generation just have the responsibility to make sure that we do not pass the virus on accidentally. Right. Well, you're not missing much here, feel and the traffic and the business uh, side of Prince George right now is is basically like a lazy Sunday. Barely anyone out on the streets. Um, a lot of businesses are closed um, and only doing pickup and deliveries. Um, yeah. Just just got word that uh, Gold's Gym is closing their doors for two weeks starting tonight. Yeah. So the YMCA, yeah, the YMCA shut their doors earlier this week and so did uh, a lot of the other gyms. Yeah. Is there much, um, like, are many people infected in Prince George, though? Zero. There are zero people. <laughs> so, why why is everywhere closing down? Uh, I, I don't make enough money, nor am I smart enough to understand that. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, the, closest, the closest people who are infected uh, with uh, COVID-19 are Kelowna, and Terrace. Those are still pretty far away. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's <sighs> about a six to seven hour drive in each direction. Yeah. So, yeah, so long as you don't go for a drive and go licking some people, you should be all right. In, in theory, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, fuck, man. I know. It's just getting blown out of proportion. It's, well, so I, I was actually having the same conversation with Daniel, the way I see it is um, the reason why China was able to get it under control is because they overreached, but that was because mm. they had to. Italy reacted way too late and they're dealing with it. So Canada and small communities like this are overreaching, which is a lot better than dealing with uh, it. 100%. Yeah. So people... But then also look at the lifestyle factors as well though so yeah um china um i mean the whole reason that we're in this mess is because a guy decided to eat a bat like <laughs> i don't know how much you've read up on uh covid and coronaviruses and everything but coronavirus has been around for decades right. um but it's never passed between it's always been an animal virus it's never passed between yeah animal and human um, and we've been very lucky with the small cases that we have had of like humans developing coronavirus that it's been fought off by our immune systems very well and very efficiently right it just so happened that this dude 
in China who decided to make some bat soup had a particularly potent strand of Corona in his lunch and went and like, infected his buddy who then infected his family and infected everybody else and created a global pandemic. But like this is nothing new. It's yeah. just um, like it started out in the markets where like food quality is poor, nutrition is poor, a high uh, number of elderly people, and then obviously spread. But like now, like if you're looking at the places that have been hit the most by it, um, like the worst places, like Italy, yeah, um, not the best, not the healthiest of diets. No, um, not also sorry. Uh, so it's got non-nutritious diets. Um, it's also got the highest number of elderly people in all of mainland Europe. Look at Spain as well. Yeah. Uh, not the healthiest of people. Like diets are a little bit better, but not the healthiest of people. Like we're talking about a, a country where it's time for a cigarette. Like it's still. <laughs> like a very heavily like smoking population. Yeah. Um, well, you and look. Then you look at Paris, countries, France as well. Like exactly the same fucking thing. Like. Yeah. Um, and then you wonder why so many people are getting infected in these places, and you're going, well, look at the fucking, like maybe if you stop fucking smoking and start eating salad, then maybe you wouldn't actually be in this fucking situation <laughs> as badly as you are. The Americans, they're in <laughs> absolute denial at this point in time. I mean, there was thousands of people on the beaches in Florida and California on spring break. I mean, that's America for you. I mean, so my brother's currently, he's living in Vegas. Um, yep. And he was saying, so Las Vegas uh, has been shut down. So wow. that's under quarantine. The strip is completely shut down. His, um, his fiance works in, uh, I can't remember the name of the hotel, but it's a big ass hotel mm. um, in on the strip, she was saying that normally throughout the course of one day, um, the restaurant would see between anywhere between 100 and 150,000 people a day. Mm -hmm. um, and um, towards the like just before the like strip closed down, she was seating 20 people a day, like just fucking 20. And Jesus. Just going like, yeah, like. It's just bad. Like the thing about this that I'm sure I'm not the only person to, like, in fact, I know for a fact I'm not. But like, like health-wise, like this is just a, a little blip. Like this is like fewer people are dying from coronavirus than they are from the regular flu. Right. Every single day at the moment, this has just been popularized. But what this has done is this is also brought to uh, attention how so ill prepared we are for any kind of global crisis i mean the panic buying alone mate like for fucking real like we've been told here <laughs> yeah that if everything goes into lockdown then we are allowed to leave our houses and homes to exercise right um we're allowed to leave uh, to go shopping we're allowed to leave to go to work if um, you are like an integral member of society. So like uh, NHS staff, firemen, police, something like that. Right. Um, and we're also allowed to go out for fresh air. So to summarize, if we lock down, you get two weeks where you just don't have to go into work. Otherwise, do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Because pubs aren't pubs aren't gonna be open, restaurants aren't gonna be open. So sit down, spend time with loved ones. Like for me, a lot of people should be seeing this as a good thing, a positive thing. Not only do I stop an infectious disease, but I also get to spend time with people that I like. And if you're in a fortunate position where you're employed and your job is safe, you get paid for this. Yes. And there's shops open, so you can go out and do a regular shop like a regular human being. But no, let's go out and buy all the fucking toilet roll. <laughs> How are you dealing with the situation as it stands right now? Being a private PT studio um, in central Manchester, uh, we have issued heaps and heaps and heaps of statements um, reassuring clients and reassuring everybody who wants to sign up and still... Um, regain control of their fitness or have a level of control over their health anyway. Um, saying, like, talking about all of the disinfecting that we're doing and everything. So we literally, we have protocols in place at the moment where 
both the trainer and client wash our hands before and after every single session. Uh, there's disinfectant spray that we use to wipe down every single piece of equipment that every single person touches in that um, in the gym. Um, the gym gets deep cleaned as in like top to bottom mm. um, at least three times a day and if you've finished like your morning sessions for the day then you go around and you deep clean as best you possibly can around the other clients um, and as it stands right now um, that's what we are able to do like it's still business as usual at the moment we haven't received any other um, instruction that we have to close down at mm. the moment um, our Prime Minister has been a little bit um, sneaky for want of a better word he's advised that people avoid public places without actually issuing a lockdown and because he's done that it means that the government doesn't have to pause rents or mortgages so smaller businesses are going out of business because they're still having to pay their rent despite not having the flow of traffic coming through their business anymore not having any income um, fortunately for us uh, we've got um, a fairly committed client base um, that believe in us as people and are obviously trusting enough that we're doing absolutely everything within our um, ability and capability uh, to keep them and us as safe as we physically can. Mm. Um, going forward, if um, if things do get worse and we don't get a lockdown, but there can't be a crowding of people, then we're going to start um, splitting everything up. So there's only maybe one or two trainers in the gym at any one time, so we avoid overcrowding um, and then keep the same protocols in place. And yeah, that's pretty much all that we can do really. And then other than basic hygiene, like wash your hands people that is literally <laughs> all that we can really do yeah is it possible for you to work from home unfortunately not really there's contingencies in place luckily the company that i'm uh, working for is expanding quite rapidly and a part of its expansion that's been on the cards for the last six to eight months or so has been a uh, paid premium subscription site but nobody has had the time to sit down and write the content for it um, luckily if there's a shutdown then there's about to be a whole host of people who have a lot of time on their hands um, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, that's hopefully going to be uh, something that we can begin to look into and that's obviously going to facilitate further growth afterwards mm. whilst I'm self-employed if I don't work if I don't deliver sessions I don't get paid. I'm not massively concerned because if we do go into quarantine for two weeks, then I can sit and I can develop a lot of content that can go forward onto the uh, subscription site or anywhere else that it may go that my employer has been generous enough to offer payment for as well. So whilst I can work from home to a degree, it's also not quite the same and it's obviously going to be at a much reduced rate to what my face-to-face um, -face sessions would normally cost.